Welcome back to another tech lesson. In this two part lesson, I'll be showing you how to tear down a set of wheels, powder coat them, and lace and true them as well. The first step is to remove the wheels from the bike. On the front wheel, we're going to remove the front axle nut and loosen up the pinch bolts. The bolt holding the front disc cover on will need to be taken off as well. After that, you can slide the axle out and take the wheel off the bike. For the rear wheel, we're going to loosen up the axle nut and remove that along with the axle block. The axle can then be pulled out and then we'll slide the rear wheel out from the swing arm. Once the wheels are off, put the axles back on the bike so they stay clean and they're off the ground. Next, we're going to remove the brake rotors and the rear sprocket from the wheels. On the rear sprocket, loosen up the nuts on the back side first because the allen heads strip out pretty easily. Now the tires can be removed from the wheels. I did a pretty detailed tech lesson on how to do this. You can click the box in the corner of the screen to view this tech lesson. Before you start taking the wheels apart, take pictures of them or record the pattern so you know how they go back together. The next step is to loosen up all the spokes using a spoke wrench. You can use an impact gun or a drill with an allen bit to remove all the spoke nipples. Once the rim is off the hub, you can remove all the spokes from the hub. Once the spokes and the nipples are off the wheel, count them to make sure you didn't lose any when you're taking the wheel apart. On the rear wheel, we're going to do the same thing. First loosen up all the spokes with the spoke wrench, then remove all the nipples with the impact gun or a drill, and then we can take the rim off the hub. Now we have to remove the bearings from the hub. The first step is to remove the dust seals. It helps to have a blind bearing puller when removing these bearings. If you don't have one, I'll show you how to pull the bearings out using a screwdriver and hammer without ruining the bearings. First, you have to heat the hub up around the bearing using a heat gun or a torch. Pry the spacer in between the bearings to the side so you can get access to the back side of one of the bearings. Be sure to keep the blade of the screwdriver perpendicular to the spacer when pounding the bearings out. If you let the screwdriver get sideways, it will go into the bearing and destroy the bearing. Once one bearing is out, you can use a socket extension or a punch to remove the other bearing. The process to remove the bearings on the rear hub is a little bit different. Since there are two bearings on the sprocket side, we'll want to remove the disc side bearing first. And to get out that bearing, we have to remove the bearing retainer. In order to get the retainer loose, we have to drill out the two pin marks on the retainer. It helps to have a socket for removing the retainer. 
but if you don't have one you can use a screwdriver or a punch. If you're using a screwdriver make sure not to damage the threads in the hub. Once the retainer is out we can remove the right side bearing. First you'll need to heat up the hub around the bearing. From here on the process is the same as the front hub. Just pry the spacer in between the bearings to the side and then use a screwdriver to punch out the right side bearing. Then use a socket extension to remove the two sprocket side bearings. With all the bearings and seals removed from the hubs, we can start preparing them for powder coating. The first step is to clean the hubs, remove all the dirt and grease from them. Then we're going to sandblast the parts so it leaves a rough finish and the powder coating has something to adhere to. You'll want to clean the parts again after sandblasting. Next, we'll mask off any surfaces that shouldn't be powder coated, such as where the bearings go into the hub. The first part we're going to powder coat is the rear sprocket. Once the sprocket is hanging from the rack, wipe it down with acetone or mineral spirits. Then preheat it in the oven for about 15 minutes at 400 degrees. Once it's out of the oven, hang the rack somewhere where you have plenty of space to spray the part. Once the part has cooled down somewhat, you can wipe it down again. Now we can spray the part. Make sure to clip the ground wire to the part first. Take your time spraying the part and spray from every angle possible so you don't miss any. If you haven't seen the last tech lesson I did about powder coating engine covers, be sure to check it out. There's a lot of helpful powder coating tips in there. I'll have the link in the description below for that video. Once you've sprayed the part, place it in the oven for the recommended temperature and time. The packaging for your powder should say the right temperature and duration. Now that the part's out of the oven, check it over to make sure you didn't miss any powder. You can always respray if you miss the spot. On the hubs, I'm going to be doing a translucent color, which means doing a color over a chrome base. When I'm doing two coats, I like to put a ground screw in the part. This just makes it easier to spray the second coat. It lets you get a better ground for the second coat. If you have a small oven like mine, just do one hub at a time. So first wipe down the part and then place it in the oven for preheating. Once it's out and cooled, you can spray the chrome base. The chrome powder is hard to see over a sandblasted surface, so make sure to take your time and spray from every angle. Once the chrome base has been baked, we can spray the translucent red, and this is the tricky part. You have to spray the translucent red right at the right temperature. The part has to be hot enough to where the powder actually sticks to the part. If it's too hot when you're spraying, the powder will actually cure on the part and the color will be a lot darker. So basically, once the rack is cool enough to touch, you can spray the part, it'll be about the right temperature. 
You know it's about the right temperature when the red looks pink when you spray it on. This means the powder isn't curing on the part before you put it in the oven. Once you've thoroughly sprayed the part, you can put it in the oven for the recommended temperature and duration. The amount of time and the temperature you have the part in the oven is very important with this color. If it's too long or too hot, it might become a lot darker. Translucent colors are pretty hard to do, so if you notice that you miss a spot, you can always respray the translucent. To powder coat smoke nimbles, I use a metal plate with holes drilled about a half inch apart from each other. To prepare the spoke nipples for powder coating, I scotch bright them to clean them up. So feed the spokes through the bottom of the plate and then thread the nipples onto the top. Make sure to thread the spokes into the nipples all the way to the end of the threads so none of the threads get powder coating in them. Next, wipe down all the spoke nipples with acetone or mineral spirits. Then place them in the oven for preheating. Wipe them down again and then you're ready to spray. You have to spray quite a lot of powder to cover all the nipples. Right when you get the nipples out of the oven, push up on the spokes so none of the nipples stick to the plate. After the nipples have cooled, you can remove them from the spokes. Some of the nipples might be a little bit hard to get off, so be careful not to strip out the Allen heads. The final step is to cut off any excess powder on the bottom of each nipple. Alright, that's going to be it for part 1. You can click anywhere on the screen to view part 2. I'll be installing the bearings, lacing and truing the wheels, installing the tires, and putting the wheels back on the bike. Thanks for watching.